on STTs, there was a tax increase. Yes, there was some, 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 some amount of rationalization when it comes to short-term capital gains and long-term uh, capital gains as well, but there was also an increase in certain classes. How do you see this? Because we've seen mixed reactions from the industry so far. See, on the long-term uh, capital gains, the capital gains has gone up by 2.5%, which is not very consequential. I mean, the stock exchanges in India have been doing very well, and I think the government is entitled to their fair share <laughs> from the increased wealth of the people of the nation. Uh, on the uh, short term, it's gone up from 15 to 20, and there was always a thought that, you know, the difference between the short term and the long term was very small at 5%, mm -hmm. now it's 7.5%. So I think that's a, it's a good move on the part of the government. Uh, actually, I am told that uh, in, in unlisted securities, the actual tax has actually come down mm -hmm. from, if it's long term, unlisted, it's come down from 20% to 12.5%. Mm. So that's uh, positive for many unlisted companies. Mm. And there are many of them, a lot of the new generation companies uh, in uh, the new innovative areas are mostly unlisted. Mm. So that's a positive. Uh, STT, I think again, as the, as the economy grows, there will be more transactions and I think the government takes a very small portion of that transaction and that is quite fair. Right. In my opinion, it's not overburdening or taxing the people too much. So, Mr. Panda, would you say that when it comes to demands on rationalizing the uh, capital gains, uh, the government has met you halfway? I would certainly say that the government has met us halfway because, you know, one of the key suggestions for, uh, from FIKI in as much as taxation was concerned was to look at uh, simplification. So whether it is in terms of the rationalization of TDS rates mm -hmm. uh, or even if you look at capital gains, now, clearly, our intention in terms of recommending a rationalization was, uh, you know, we didn't uh, obviously plug the increase in, in uh, rates, but we were certainly asking for removal of distinction between resident and non-resident, between different asset classes, between uh, holding periods and all of that. So from that point of view, I think what you have ended up with, in, particularly in terms of capital gains, is a regime which is fairly clear where it is 20% uh, uh, short-term capital gains for, uh, for financial assets and the rates continue to be what they were for other assets and you have a fairly simplified um, uh, long-term uh, regimen which is 12.5%. Yes, the rate is slightly higher but as uh, my friend Sandeep mentioned, it is not something that, uh, that I think one is going to waste uh, a lot of time uh, you know, uh, um, uh, agitating over that. I think the, the benefit that you have had in terms of um, of uh, uh, an, a move towards greater simplification mm. is uh, definitely something that we welcome. I would say definitely halfway, if not a little bit more. All right. Uh, Parishat, a quick one on the tax. Uh, there were two other recommendations among the long list that Fiki had given. One was, of course, the abolishment of the angel tax, uh, which I think was significant. And the other one was the decriminalization of commercial offenses. Mm. Fiki has been talking about this for a long time, and I think that trend is a very positive methodology of uh, you know, looking at it. Also, uh, the underlying theme of certainty of tax regime. Mm. So all these three also must be called out. Right. Now, when it comes to, uh, Mr. Mittal, attracting more investments into the country, how do you think the finance minister has fared on different fronts? And as Ms. Uh, Reddy was pointing out, uh, there's ease of doing business. There are provisions of the tax laws which have been decriminalized. Uh, how do you see that? There's also corporate tax for foreign companies that has been reduced. Yeah. Mm. I think, uh, you know, certainty is what the foreign investors look for in any country. I think continuity, stability, and least litigation. Mm -hmm. I think in this budget, at least what we heard the finance minister saying, is setting up that agenda. She talked about saying we want to bring the litigations at the lowest level. We need to sit across. <clears throat> and if we can bring their litigation, the biggest litigators between... Mm -hmm government and the, and the private sector is always the case. And taxation has been reduced now for the foreign companies. So I think it's a, it's a great move. Even from Indian corporate point of view, I think it's a good move to say we want to bring the litigation at the lowest level. Mm. We want to decriminalize things because nobody wants you know, disputes and litigations to go for eternity. Is this now going to be appreciated abroad that the government has continued on the path of fiscal prudence, what, what it had started with the interim budget? It wants to continue on that path. This was also mentioned in the BGP manifesto. Do you think this is going to be seen in a positive light? I 100% think it's, it's a very good signal. I think... Um, 
it is there's no hiding the fact that India is the world's fastest growing economy uh, that in every sector you look there's so much scope to do more mm. that we have a very powerful human resource advantage and now with the employment generation scheme and the skilling scheme this will be further channelized so I continue <coughs> to believe that India is the best place for multinational companies to come in mm. for foreign direct investment and uh, another important trend which will continue is the setting up of global competency centers. Mm. It's estimated that 50% of the world's GCCs will be in India. And I think that will, you know, live out the legs, the uh, prophecy, and will also be a further impetus on uh, employment generation. Right. So all in all, this is like a self-fulfilling prophecy. All right. On MSMEs, uh, Mr. Sumani, there have been announcements on the treads uh, platform there was announcement on a credit guarantee scheme how does this budget do in terms of aligning msmes in the country closer with global value chains uh, making them better in complying with global norms and increasing their exports so the tread uh, matter was a request that was made by fiki and it's been uh, fulfilled by the government i think if you look at uh, the honorable finance minister's speech her thrust was in terms of modernizing the MSME sector, for which easier credits will be available without guarantees, and that's a big one, because you, we, you never could get credit without guarantees in India earlier. So that's a bold step. And I think her thrust is that uh, people should go out, get the most modern equipment, whether from India or abroad, and make world-class products. And I think the MSME sector is a very important sector, is the backbone of employment uh, in India. Uh, apart from agriculture. Uh, I think we have one of the largest M S M S uh, SME and MSME sectors in the world. Uh, and I think uh, employment creation is a matter of national importance. The MSMEs can you know, help towards creating more jobs. And any access to credit, uh, affordable credit and easy access to credit are two things that are necessary for them to improve their quality of output and productivity. So I think this will go a long way in terms of making sure that they become much more world-class than what they are today. On the employment linked incentives, both CIA and FICI have been asking for ELIs for quite some time now. Uh, does this completely meet the industry's recommendations and will this actually lead to job creation? Because this had become a very strong issue over the past few uh, months and the government was also being questioned about job creation in the formal sector. So Parikshit, and also the, skilled jobs. Okay. So Parikshit, these are two issues which we are conflating and they are related of course. So first is if you look at the PLI scheme, I think that's something that has done very well. Uh, the standout success of course being the personal uh, uh, electronics and mobile phones. But overall I think PLI has done well with, uh, with 1.28 lakh crores of investment leading to about uh, nearly 11 lakh crores of uh, production and sales and 8.5 and lakh jobs. So clearly it is something that, uh, that has worked well. But I think as a, you know, personally my belief and something that Fiki has also advocated is that um, one needed to bring other elements into play as far as PLI is concerned. One being to bring in the component ecosystem, but let me leave, leave that aside for a second, but also to use it as a, as a means to drive employment because uh, that is something, you know, when you look at, uh, uh, you know, the, the large number of young men and women coming into the workforce every year, uh, that, is, uh, that is something that we have to, as a nation, be focused on to ensure that we are creating well-paying jobs and providing opportunities for them to, uh, you know, to, to progress. So from that point of view, uh, Fiki had talked about employment-linked uh, incentive schemes and employment being one of the uh, factors that you look at when devising a PLI scheme. What has been included in the budget, I think, is another element of it, which is also very interesting, which is a scheme for first-time employment and a scheme for, uh, for subsidizing employment specifically in the manufacturing sector and uh, as well as other sectors. I think this is important uh, for the simple reason that we have the demographic dividend, right. but that demographic dividend is useful if you are able to provide opportunities to these young men and women, as I mentioned. And equally, I think there is an issue, uh, you know, in, in certain sectors, as, uh, at least, where skilled manpower has been lacking. Mm. So I think through these sorts of measures, as well as the apprenticeship uh, scheme, which sort of gives exposure to one crore youth to the top 500 com uh, companies of the country, 
I think that is, you know, that that starts that uh, uh, that uh, focus on employment and other things, which is which is a integral aspect of growth because it's not just growth; it's sustainable, inclusive, resilient, and the inclusivity angle comes in from every section of society being part of this uh, of this journey.